issue that I really want to talk about. Uh, water. I'm not joking. You know, the next one really shows that the word war is on. That's in record. It's about parking space in the Pumas. The whole battalion of Pumas, if you see there, had to fight for four hours. The ACP had 40 stitches. The joint ACP had like 28 stitches. So they were fighting over parking. Parking really creates a lot of high tempers in people. In Delhi, there have been killings on the street because of parking, saying, you know, that's mine versus yours, because everybody thinks it's their property now, but it's a street, it's public space, so unless we start addressing that now and change parking, the way people think about parking, it's not going to change. So there's some basics of parking. When I show that picture, what do you think? You can park here. You can park here. What else? Pay for push. Pay? Pay for push. Pay for push. What? Her name. Pushpa. Excellent. Pay through your nose. Pay through your nose. What else? Pay and park. Pay and park. It's just a P. Is it a piece? Yeah, world piece. Right. What else? What else? P for policy. Okay. Okay, people. Good. Okay, shall I say P? Is, this one is the symbol, the internationally accepted symbol for parking, so at least we'll keep it at parking. But parking really is that. Parking is a magnet. And what kind of a magnet is it? The minute you create parking, that's what happens. Right? So don't think by just shifting parking from on street to off street is going to solve the problem because all those vehicles still have to come on the street first to reach that destination called parking. So parking really is a destination. Parking is a magnet at a destination. Unless that parking is removed, we're not going to see less congestion on the streets. The more parking that we create on street, off street, wherever, they will, the more the cars they will be, the more the private motor vehicles they will be. I think that's the basic ground rule we also all have to understand. The solution is not in creating more parking, Wherever it is, the solution is in reducing the parking. So you can do that. You can you can you can have the carrots. So you can have the carrots and the sticks. You know, yes, you can have carrots and sticks. Fine, if you want to buy a car and you have the money to buy it. So let's, let's, go, let's look at the truth of what parking is. But we know for sure that traffic jams are not are a main issue why traffic jams happen is because there is parking in any format, on street, off street, not just on street. Right? So we've got to remove parking because that's what happens. And there'll be unending demand of this parking for free. And that's what's happening right now. And we have paradises paved right now. And, and, and I don't know how much it is in, in Bombay, a certain extent. But in Delhi, it's just a madness. Every single park of the DDA has now become cemented to park vehicles on it. There are no parks anymore. And all those parks that we had have become parking. Barking. So I think the basic principle we also all have to get is parking is not a birthright. The Indian Constitution does not say that you can have parking as a birthright. Parking is a commodity. Parking is like an air conditioner. When you buy an air conditioner, you don't go to the government and say, hey, give me a house to put this air conditioner in because I bought the air conditioner. It's your job to give me the house. Parking is exactly like that. And it's not even a house for yourself. It's a house for a 1,000 kilogram piece of metal. 
And the government has no business in giving that free parking. If you want to own your parking, buy your own parking. And if you buy too much parking, we can still penalize you for not building that parking because that's creating all kinds of nonsense on the street because it's creating a lot of traffic jams. So if, if we get that in, that parking is a commodity. Parking is something that you buy if you like, like an air conditioner and not something that is going to be just given to you for free. And, and we really got to tackle the on-street parking issue first. We can't just create multi-story parking and additional parking. Right, because people, who's, who's, like, what kind of an idiot would there be who gets free parking right next to the shop he wants to go to and you tell him, go pay 50 rupees and park it somewhere else? No one. So unless we address this issue first, that's not going to happen. Even if you want to create multi-story, mechanized, non-mechanized, whatever kind of parking. So what should be done? Don't buy cars. Don't buy cars. Take a deposit. Bullet cards. <laughs> well, you know, the interesting thing is, like, bullet cards are also personalized traffic, yeah. right? Like that's it. precisely what used to create traffic jams in <laughs> London and New York a hundred years back, horse carriages. So. They're similar. So we need to address the issue that we can't be going around with this huge object, and I'll show you a small little picture. Yeah. yeah, but then they still require space. And the fight's going to be over road space, the World War Three. So we've got to create space for public transportation. So we always have this big argument why we can't have BRT because there's not sufficient space on the street. But the truth is, 50% of that street is already occupied by parked cars or because there's a traffic jam those cars create before entering the parking. What do we have on Tulsi Pipe Road? Like Phoenix Malls may say we have five lakh square feet of parking available, but what it's also creating is a jam on Tulsi Pipe Road. Because before they enter, they just queue up outside the street, and they're, just, they're coming from wherever they're coming from, so they're creating traffic jams. So why not specify standards for the car? Exactly. That you can you don't, you're not required to make parking, you're actually required not to make parking. That's what we need to go to. And prioritize pedestrians, create great spaces for pedestrians, create compact cities by having mixed use, connected streets, and all those things, and start parking fees. Uh, charge with a simple rule, market goes up, you pay more, market goes down, you pay less. It's a choice, make sure that People are equitably charged, so if you have a scooter, you charge one-fifth the price than a car. The make of the cars and the scooter should be charged. Sure. And you'll use the parking fee. I think this is a big one. Use the parking fee to do something good for the local area. Because people really then start embracing it. They're saying, you know, I get a great area to be around, so I don't... Ring fence I, I'm, the fund. Ring fence the fund, to put it only that. And there's some great examples. I'll talk about some stuff happening in Europe, which is a great stuff. There's also a report on this, which you can download, which is what Ashok was talking about earlier. That's a picture of Copenhagen, which we now everybody says, great place, cycling, that, this. This is Copenhagen for you 60 years back. This is the main arterial of Copenhagen 60 years back. They were in the same place where they're just paving up their plazas to create more parking on the streets. <laughs> And they realized that that's not going to get them anywhere, so this is where they are right now. They changed, they decided to pedestrianize it. They decided to reduce the parking, and they have great cycling. There was a survey which was done as to why Danes cycle. Can anybody tell me what Danes think? Why they cycle? Good for the economy. Good for the economy, and we have. Good for economy and health. All those answers are wrong. The main answer is because they all realize that it's good for the environment and it's for climate change. And precisely one person said that. One person said it's because we understand it's climate change and we've got to change things. Planet Earth. Same thing, 1%. But only 1% said that. 6% said it's cheap. 19% said it's because of health and exercise and that and this. What did everybody else say? Nineteen percent said it's less money. I mean, nineteen plus six, twenty-five and twenty-six. 
So what did everybody else say? Exactly, because it's fast, easy, and convenient. You make it easier for cycles to go through, they will use cycles. If you make it easier for them to use cars, which is by creating more parking and creating more road space, they're going to use cars. Simple human tendencies. But it's not as... It may not be convenient. Exactly, climate. We have bad climate, we can't use it. <laughs> right? We have much better climate to use cycles in India than what they have. And that's what cities have done across Europe. That's what it used to look like, Riverfronts. This is what Riverfronts look like, great places to be. Remove parking, put cafes. But in India, it doesn't have to be a cafe. It can be a chai ka galla for all you care, you know, but create something that's for the people, not for cars, right? It can be chai ka galla, it can be vada pav, it can be a cafe. Can we have a reading store there? Can have a music store? Anything can have. Exactly, exactly. Anything wet parking. And what are the cities doing? They're putting all that money into cycle sharing systems. I'll show you examples of that. And this, this space used to be parking earlier, which is no longer parking now. Exactly whatever has been given to the cycle sharing system there. Creating gate pedestrian spaces. And pricing matters. That's the case of London where no meters, they had double parking, perpendicular parking, half a parking, foot meters, it gets orderly, put more price, you get a whole side to create something else, like a cycle track. That's what London is doing right now, putting cycle tracks across the city. And let's look at the prices. Say something, doesn't it? It's not just about cars. Look, look, even if you say that the, the Indian rupees exchange rate is exactly not right because of purchasing power parity, it's still... India is the more affording. The car is more expensive than India. Exactly, India. exactly. So you can say... They can, they the car is 5,000. Yeah. But the dollar rate they're taking over here. Right? So that, that's what cities are doing. They're doing progressive parking pricing. You know, the more longer you park, the more that you pay. You don't get a long-term parking discount. You get a long-term parking penalty. And earmark, ring fence that money to create something great. London is using it for freedom passes. Barcelona runs its own cycle sharing system. They are all of it using parking price, parking fees that it collects. Antwerp does, uh, you know, invest it into public transportation. That's exactly what Budapest does. And Budapest also has a great communication story because every bus that they purchase using this parking money, there's their big posters on it saying, thank you for paying parking because that's why I am possible. <laughs> right? So you've got to tell the people that what's happening with that parking. It's not just going into some pool of money which somebody is eating away. You're creating something good for the people in the city. And then comes the issue of parking requirement. That's what other countries have messed up. They, and this is exactly what Bombay is doing right now because I see all these buildings where the first living floor comes on the 15th floor. Right? So we, we better not do that. Like we are going from this to that now. Instead, not really instead, but I also want to give some other bad examples. That's a bad example. That's the Gherkin in London. Guess how many floors of parking that building has? How many? No, 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 no. So I'm going to give you ex choices. It has 10 floors of parking, 12 floors of parking, 14 floors of parking, and 20 floors of parking. How many? 20. 20. How many 20? <coughs> okay, how many 14? How many 14? How many 12? How many 10? And the rest of you? Not I didn't give you all the options. The last option is zero. Zero. No. zero. That's what it has. It has no parking. Right? It's right in the center of London. It's, it's one of the most expensive private properties in town. And it has no parking because it has great public transportation access. And that's what Paris does. Paris has a 100% waiver on parking requirement if you are within 500 meters of the station, which is pretty much the whole of Paris because of the extent of its rail system and bus services that are there in the city. Parking maximums and parking minimums. 
this is a cool example. You know, this, this is Professor Hermann Lohr Flacher from the TU Vienna. He goes around town every Sunday with this walker mobile. You know, it's the same size as a car, but he walks around with this thing on his shoulders, and everybody's like, you know, are you an idiot? Why are you wasting space? And he's like, I'm just doing the same thing, and you also keep doing on top of it. <laughs> that's, that's precisely, you know, what's happening with cars. This seems bizarre. That's exactly what. But this sends the right message. Exactly. Yeah, he's speaking in uh, German and yeah, so uh, now in the English, they should talk in Marathi. Amchi Mumbai needs Marathi. Right? Uh, so, some information about Paris, what it's doing. Paris has actually reduced parking supply over the years. Public parking supply. It's reduced it by nearly 10%. And it's using a lot of that, it's, that space created for its bicycle sharing system, which has 25,000 bicycles right now. Great system. Uh, what do you mean by public bike sharing system? So public bike sharing system is where you have bicycles. It's a public transportation system where you have bicycles available. <laughs> and instead of having a driver drive you, you drive it yourself. You rent it, basically. You don't own the bicycle. Yeah. And then you don't normally rent it, rent it. You, you typically have an annual membership and you can use it for free for the first half an hour to one hour. And then after that, you, you kind of pay a fee for it. But it helps to people to use the same bicycle many times in the city. And you leave it at C, right? So you go from your house to your bus stop, you take the bus, and somebody else comes from somewhere else to the bus stop, takes the bicycle, comes back to the office. So. That's how the same bicycle keeps rotating around. And sometimes sometimes you need to reallocate them. So you get, if there are too many bicycles getting collected at one place, you take a bunch of them and put them at the other station. Right? That's what's being done. It's great. Uh, the city of Hangzhou in China has 50,000 bicycles in the city. There are like nearly 4 lakh trips every day happening on those shared bicycles in the city. It's just great. It's going viral in China right now. And Indian Ministry of Urban Development supports it, so we should have something in Mumbai as well. But if we know all this, why is the government regulating? Because it's easier that way. What? We know that historically we are like 1600 years behind. We are following techniques that are outdated. Yeah. Practically. Yeah. So why isn't the government just mandating that, you know, cycle we is the way to go, parking is expensive. Like the one before. That's what they're doing now, <coughs> gradually. So, you know, Chennai at least we've yeah. gotten of some. Course. Which is a bad example. So of all the slots are charged in parking, which has reduced the total amount of vehicle kilometers traveled in the city. Uh, these are numbers. Uh, and substantial changes, like in you know, a shift from car to cycle by, of 5% is not a small number in a big city. And that's what they're doing with all that space reclaimed from the street. This used to be, in, in some places, it, 
it's one parking space, like, you know, a lane of parking, which has been removed to create cycle tracks, over 100 kilometers of cycle tracks created. In some places, it's just one lane taken away. And you can see the old curb line and the new curb line there, which has been created to create cycle tracks. And it's just retrofitted. You go and start building on top of the existing lane. There's no requirement. Two meters. All it requires a paint. And paints and wheels. Sometimes in paint. Yeah, just paint and wheels is also fine. Yeah, I've seen attachments to the cycle where the mother is cycling in Bombay and then she attaches another cycle and the baby is in the behind cycle and there's another attachment and the luggage is in the trolley that's trolley trolley along. So you can do that also. Yes. Just the other day there was an article in, in, in on BBC about why Netherlands is the way Netherlands is. Where you know you don't it's it's easier and convenient for you to for you to use bicycles. You don't think you are a special category if you're using bicycles. You think you're a special not special category, but you know, you think you're doing out of the norm if you're using a car. You are the norm if you're using a bicycle in in the city of Netherlands. Right, that's where we need to reach, and that's that's. And it also took them about two and a half, three decades to reach there because they made the same set of mistakes as we are doing right now. It's not old school. Sorry, it's a small thing. It is not old school. It's a current school. It's a current. So this is the old. Yeah. It's current school. Yeah, because we are old. <laughs> We're still old, right? And that's what that's what cities are doing. Their, their government requires more parking to be created outside by builders, uh, and sometimes even promotes it. And instead, what we really need to change is an understanding that it's impossible to cater to the demand. If each one of us, if each one in this building had a car to come by, you will require three times more parking space in this building. So 75% will be parking, 25% will be place for people. That's what you require because the average space in Bombay, from I understand, for white collar jobs is 100 square feet. That's 10 square meters. The average space required for a car to park, if it's in a building, is 30 square meters, so three times as much. So it's just impossible to cater to that demand, so you've got to do something else. And if you're going to do something else, you start improving your public transportation, not increase parking supply. Yes, I, I really like carpooling and it's really nice when you have 50 passengers and a driver to drive, it's called a bus. <laughs> right? And, and I really like this one because you can't cure obesity with bigger pants. When you go from 30 to 40 inches, you buy a bigger trousers. You go from 40 to 50, nobody stitches, nobody, nothing is ready ready made. So you have to go to a tailor to get it stitched. But when you go from 50 to 60, you don't need a tailor, you need a coffin. <laughs> so we don't want our cities to be in coffins, let's change it.